Welcome back and thank you very much. It's Monday, the 18th day of uh, November. So we're just uh, a few days shy from Christmas. Daily Graphic this morning reports that Dagbon marks Damba Festival after a 17 year break. Beautiful culture exhibited there by the people of the North. Strengthening basic education to prepare children adequately. Prof. Day. December 17 referendum. House of Chiefs stares controversy. Or Chihini or Jiahoho square up with leadership. Togbi Afede and uh, Nane Wusi. Ghanaian Times. Catholic bishops kick against CSE. Call on government to stop future reintroduction into education uh, curriculum. Most Reverend Philip Name is the president of the Ghana Catholic Bishops uh, Conference. And support Yana to consolidate uh, peace in Dagban. Also, Kwesiapia endorses Wembley Sports, the new AstroTurf at the Medina Stadium. Uh, you should go out there and check it out. It's amazing, amazing. And uh, Robert Coman, good morning to you. The GMA suspends strike. And the final newspaper, Clash of Big Chiefs, over no vote in referendum statement. Ojiaho Hoya Ojebi, the second is there. Dasebre Nana Kwebu Ewusi, the seventh is also there. Uh, he is in together with Togwia Feather, the 14th president of the National House of Chiefs, and Osaji Fawamoto for opinion, the second, and Ojiaho um, Hoya uh, on one side. They say, well, it doesn't, the statement issued by Togwia Feather and his team doesn't uh, it reflect the, the sense that they have of the forthcoming referendum. Daily Guide, President ends Dagbon title, host of Chiefs on fire over referendum, and Jet Li, Jack Ma, Ban Ki-moon in Ghana, Kwee, Obawo, ex-UN boss, Lord Nana, and the BNFT, government must lead innovation agenda. Is government 6.8% growth uh, target realistic? That's the question we're asking this morning on the front page of the BNFT. My guest this morning is the Honourable Member for Second D, and uh, he hopes to go in there for a second time. He is a lawyer and a member of the MPP's communication team, lawyer Andrew Echapamesa is my guest. Good morning, Chief. How are you doing? Morning. How was the weekend? Well, ah, it was good. It was good for uh, you? We, we had the post-budget workshop okay. uh, in Parliament. So if you can see, my file has a yeah. parliamentary training institute. Uh, right. So we're all... Um, at the DFM and conference room. The speaker is uh, not happy department. with you that you're asking for so much money to do post-budget review. Rather? Yeah. Oh, I thought that the decision of leadership which was announced mm. uh, to members, um, I took it uh, in good uh, faith uh, that uh, in previous times where we've had to leave the presence of parliament, mm -hmm. it has cost us in excess of 1.7, 1.8 million. And so the decision to host it uh, at the presence of parliament, mm -hmm. uh, even though uh, we didn't have the opportunity to, you know, have a desk to write on. Right. I, I felt that the savings in itself was good. It was good uh, for, okay. for, for us. So uh, I did not have any issues with the, right. the decision. To us. And right. I was there for both days. Uh, I see. Both Saturday and a lot of MPs mm. did indeed attend okay. uh, the sessions on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so let we're me making use this to commend. Oh yes, of course mm. we are uh, commend the facilitators. And the experts who came to uh, proffer their views mm. on, on the budget and, and, and gave us some tools that definitely will aid in, in the debate which is beginning this morning. Okay, right. Ah, so you missed the chance to watch the Black Stars match. Yes, I, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't get the opportunity to watch uh, okay. the entire game. Okay. But I watched snippets of it. Mm. And, uh, it was an exciting uh, moment to behold uh, that Ghana, uh, the love. Uh, for our black stars, yeah, it's coming back. It's coming back. Uh, I'm sure that uh, the supporters have seen something good in the new GFA leadership. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, I mean, fans in Cape Coast did indeed turn up uh, to make it uh, mm -hmm. a, a beautiful match. And of course, they won, mm -hmm. you know, and that, that in itself was an icing. There, there was a Cape. while in Cape Coast as well. Uh, he, he, he was running on the pitch invader. Yes, yes, the pitch invader. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, it was the first time I'd seen such a, mm. a, a scene on on our football mm. space. But I mm. guess that uh, was part of the excitement. Right. I hear you wanted to take a selfie with uh, the party, the party. party. Yeah. Uh, I see. With that speed. <laughs> <laughs> well, the man is an athlete. Uh, he's a trained nurse <laughs> who is at home waiting for his posting. So okay. He's he's trying to exercise small small. But the, the blasters are going to Sao Tome. I'm told. And Kwesiapi has endorsed the Astro because when they go to Sao Tome, they'll be playing 
on the astro turf. You don't have an astro turf in your constituency, right? Well, I'm working on one. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, uh, we, we should be able to bring some. Uh, but now you don't have it. No, now we don't have it. Yes, uh, you don't have it. There are not many across the length and breadth. Yes, but you don't have it. Now yes, it's I don't. in Accra. You don't it have is. it. I know. You don't have it. Uh, Robert my, Coleman. Very good friend, Robert Coleman. Yes. Go ahead, go ahead and give me a Japan Mesa one. Uh, we're working on it. He's actually sent his team there okay. to take measurements, take photographs, and uh, he's giving me a quotation, okay. uh, which we are working on to procure. The, the way funding. you are speaking softly, it's as if Robert is squeezing you. Oh, no, he's not. <laughs> he's actually giving us some decent uh, discounts. Okay. You know? Yeah, so working on it. Okay, great. Let's talk about the House of Chiefs. Um, we'll, we'll do some of the budget uh, conversations, but the House of Chiefs, they, they, they seem to be sharply divided on whether to go yes or no. Uh, Toby Afede and uh, his vice say, well, let's go for uh, a no vote, right? And then Ochehene and uh, Ojijaho say, no, this doesn't reflect what we want to, to push. Where do you stand? I'm for a yes. Uh, there's no doubt at all okay. that I'm for a yes. Uh, because uh, like I indicated, if you recall last week, mm -hmm. uh, when I appeared in our show with my very good friend, Alassan Suhini, yeah. I was categorical that uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, uh, asking political parties to participate mm -hmm. at the local government level uh, does not in itself bring about division. I, I sit in parliament. Mm. Uh, some of my very good friends are on the other side. Mm. We, we differ strongly on certain positions. Mm. But I don't see that as being a basis for the allegation mm -hmm. that this country is divided. Mm -hmm. uh, we are friends. I mean, as though I don't see how Introducing political party participation at the local level mm -hmm. would bring divisiveness. In any event, I've heard arguments of winner takes all. Yeah, yeah. And that, that is not good for our democracy. Is it good for us? Well, that's the constitutional architecture that we run with. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, there are no issues with it at all. There aren't. Uh, because how how... Okay, so that... There have been talks about no, hold on. square plugs and round holes, people getting patronage because they funded a political party and so they are getting uh, a certain appointment, not because they, they merit it, but because they're just to say thank you to them. And that's one of the biggest challenges of the winner takes all. So and the fear is that let's not bring it into our local politics because then the people will suffer most. So, His Excellency Nana Don Kwakufuado should, for instance, appoint Mr. Seth Tepe as finance minister, and that would deal with the issue of winner takes all. Mm. Is that a suggestion? If he's competent, why not? He's Ghanaian. Is the finance minister not competent? No, I'm not saying that. Yeah, so, I mean. But you're asking, look, should he? Uh, you see, we have a certain governance structure. Okay. Which says that two or three or as many political parties as are interested in mm -hmm. pushing their vision of what a Ghana should be. Mm -hmm. Of course, situate within a particular development agenda that we as a nation, I believe, should have mm -hmm. in the documents that the National Development Planning Commission uh, should put together. Okay. But that I have a certain ideology. Mm -hmm. And so I sell my message through a manifesto okay. to the people. Mm -hmm. And they buy into my ideology, my vision, and they vote for me. Mm. You said I should appoint my competitors into government. Is that a suggestion? <laughs> I mean, let, let's, let's be sincere and honest about these things. I, I remember that at the... The I, only expectation I, that I would have mm. is for an MPP to go government to appoint competent MPP people into I remember government. that at the IEA debate, the, the question that would run through would be, okay, so you have very fine ideas. If you do not win, what happens? Then they say, well, we will support whoever wins to, to govern and, and get all the best dividends that we can as a nation. And then they ask, okay, so <laughs> if you win, 
What would you do? He says, I will bring everybody on board Johnny, to work. You, 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 Did the presidential candidates at the time mean what they were saying? Or they were just saying that I, to I, I, you? I don't recall this conversation. Oh, it's, I mean. Well, it, I don't for recall. Every IEA every, debate, at least, that I have, I have seen and I'm watched. Not, I'm not challenging you on you that. Will, they will say, they but will ask you. I'm so saying you don't win. to you that mm. I do not recall this conversation taking place. Maybe it did. But the reality, mm. and it's not only Ghana. Have you seen the Boris Johnson government appointing anybody from the Labour side into his government, into Pre his cabinet? President Kufu appointed uh, Dr. Papakwisi in Dome. He appointed, <coughs> he appointed Professor George Penny Hagan. You, you see, they were CPP elements. Yes. He brought them in there. But of course. Why CPP, can't we? CPP, you know, uh, if you like, are not a real competition. I see. Are they? I don't know. You tell me. Oh, I've told you. Don't <laughs> behave like that. Oh. <laughs> In any event, you see, as far as I'm concerned, even the winner takes all question. Mm. It's addressed by a yes vote. Because what it would then mean is that the other opposition parties can win in their strongholds and be able to contribute to our governance at the local level. Really? Is, is it as simple as it sounds? But is it not? So, are, so, you, are, you, are you saying to me that mm -hmm. NPP, DC mm -hmm. can ever win in the Volta region? Or in some constituencies in the Volta region? Is it not possible? And, and this, the reality, the data, the previous experiences with our mm -hmm. voting pattern mm -hmm. clearly doesn't support that assertion. The, the, one of, one okay, of the key, so one, me, one, of, one of the key concerns that have also come up is that look, an issue like the district assembly common fund is supposed to come in quarters. Up until now, the third and fourth quarters have not come. It's not been disbursed, even though they are statutory funds. There are children with disability who are depending on it for their school fees. There are persons living with disability who are depending on it for it from their livelihoods. There's security in there. There's education in there. There's health in there. So many elements. And no single DC in this country has been strong enough to go and say, Mr. President, we need the money to do A, B, C, and D. Give us the money. Well, because they are appointed by the president and they are answerable to the president. If the president is happy with them, they are happy with the president. If the people are not happy with them, well, it doesn't really matter because the president who appointed is happy with them. If we had an independent DC, they could actually put themselves together and say, Mr. President, state, give us the money because we need it. Our people have paid their property rate, their business operation permit, and that is what will culminate into the district assembly common funds. Disperse it and give us, don't you think? And by independent DCs, you mean DCs who do not have political affiliation or who are not sponsored by political parties? Mm. Is that what you mean? Yes. But are you aware that even as we speak, mm. yeah, albeit unconstitutional and not formal. Mm -hmm. Political parties actually do support assemblymen. So you are saying that because there is crime, so I'm there saying, is armed no, robbery, no, 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 and, no, no, no. and the police see, say, that, that, the, that, poli the that, police that, says that, that look, we have no, not been no, able to no, arrest, no, there's crime, Johnny, but Johnny, they are not telling us Johnny, how they are prosecuting people, would, then would we all, should legalize crime. With, with all due respect, that argument, I've heard it, and for me it's pedestrian. Really? Okay, we should be able to distinguish the issues and deal with them as they are mm. individually okay this conversation about whether voting at the local level and sponsorship mm. informal sponsorship by political parties should be equated to armed robbery and its legalization mm. i mean what are we talking about okay i'm saying that there's no guarantee mm -hmm. that the president's power that he is prepared to shed by asking Ghanaians to vote for their MMDCs mm. will not be sponsored by political parties. There's absolutely no guarantee. And so why don't we formalize it? In any event, mm. it is the highest decision-making body at the local level. Have we broken the system to the extent that we are not happy to run a broken system? Because if you look at the Local Government Act, it says it must not be partisan political. But it's not. Well, I'm saying but that, we are saying that on, on the sidelines, people are pushing things in there. People are now sponsoring assembly men and assembly women on partisan lines. So why should we endorse that when we know that it is the wrong thing to do? Why should we be the ones endorsing it? 
and saying that, oh, because we have done it over time, let us now legalize it and legitimize it. Is that, is that the best we could do for ourselves? I'm saying to you that even the decision to deprive mm. political parties participation at that level mm. in itself is the reason why they find ways to participate in. Mm. Okay? Because if the role of political parties is to, as it were, galvanize uh, and shape the will of the people, Mm. but they can do so at the national level but not at the local level where the greater majority of the people are where the avenue to participate mm. is more across all the districts as opposed to the national level where you have only one parliament sitting mm. in Accra mm. they would find ways the president, to participate the president appoints 30% or so of the, 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 if you like, the parliament of the district. What else are we looking for? Or partisan that's, inclusion? That, that fits into the winner takes all mentality that we say is not good. For okay. Governance. Let me introduce the honorable member for the uh, parliament, honorable member of parliament for the South Town constituency. North Town. Uh, North Town constituency, I beg your pardon. Also a ranking member on the Foreign Affairs Committee of Parliament, Sam Okuja to a black here. Good morning. Good Hi, to good see morning. you. Good to see it's, you. It's been a while. It's true. Hope you're yes. doing well. Alive and well. I'm surviving the master plan. Good okay. to see you, my brother. So, Hope good you're good. so, yeah. so before you got in, we were talking about the referendum. The National House of Chiefs seems to be divided on, on what they want in the forthcoming referendum on December 17. Andrew is, is pushing for a yes vote. Where do you stand? <coughs> well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning to you to uh, Japan Mesa and to our distinguished uh, viewers. Mm. This is a matter that requires a lot of uh, reflection. Mm. We need to proceed very gingerly and um, really look at the future mm. of local governance in our country. It is not a simplistic matter. Uh, it is not a matter uh, we should come to lightly. It requires a lot of uh, uh, introspection, research, mm. and, uh, and all of that. And that is why, as a party, you notice that we have taken time to evolve a position on this uh, particular uh, issue. Mm. We did set up uh, a committee chaired by the eminent local government expert, Professor Kwamina Ahoy. Mm -hmm. um, in there, you had uh, other very seasoned mm -hmm. uh, local government and constitutional law experts who presented a report to our party and we were convinced with their recommendations mm -hmm. and that is why as a party we have taken a decision to uh, go for a no vote what on, does the, that mean? On, on the 17. What we are saying is that Article 55.3, mm -hmm. we seek to remove all impediments uh, for partisan mm -hmm. involvement in the local government election uh, should be kept as it is, okay. and that we should not amend Article 55.3 of the Constitution okay. so that uh, the election of DCs and unit committee members, that's okay. how low we want to go. Mm. You know, people are not reading Article 55.3 in full. It exactly. includes unit, unit committee, committee members. Uh, members. I mean, that's, 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 that's going too far. That's uh, an entrenched in, in, uh, in, uh, provision. Yeah, yes, and, and, and that's why a referendum uh, becomes the way out. Mm. We have stressed quite emphatically, mm -hmm. that we are not opposed to electing uh, DCEs. Indeed, if you look at our 2016 manifesto, mm -hmm. we put forth that argument. Mm -hmm. Consistent with our position, the white paper we issued on the Constitution Re Review uh, Commission's mm -hmm. report, you recall that the Professor Fiajo yeah, uh, uh, committee, after going around the country and, and, and seeking the views of of, of, of Ghanaians generally, mm. uh, did recommend that the current 
mode of select, selecting MMDCs should be amended. Right. And we took the view that let's go for election, but a middle ground which will allow for competence to be brought to bear. So if you look, if, if you recall, our white paper said that we should have f five people uh, nominated mm -hmm. uh, by the president mm -hmm. who will go for uh, an, interview an interview with the Public Services mm -hmm. Commission and three out of the five will short be listed. shortlisted for, for an election. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, a middle of the road uh, position, if you like. Mm -hmm. And we hold the view that that really satisfies all uh, sides in terms of those who are concerned about the quality mm -hmm. at that level and then those who want the, the, the masses mm -hmm. to be given a role to play mm -hmm. as in the universal adult suffrage. Mind you, uh, under the current system, though the president appoints mm -hmm. the DCs, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, within the various assemblies, you have uh, assembly members who have to vote. Exactly. Uh, so they, they, they must secure some two thirds majority vote. Mm -hmm. So there's some kind of election, but so limited, so narrow. Right. And we thought that we should widen, widen uh, the mm -hmm. scope. So that's the view uh, we took, and it's a view that we continue to maintain. Mm -hmm. I am quite disappointed when the argument becomes, you know, we've been flouting the law, uh, let's not be hypocritical, mm -hmm. political parties are involved, so legalize it. I, I think that it's, 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 not, it's, it's not an honorable position to take. I mean... Why not? The law is clear, don't get involved. And you say you have been getting involved. Uh, so because of that, let's legalize it. No, I, I think that we should come up with more profound arguments, arguments that are more in the national interest than, you know, coming uh, to the table uh, saying that, you know, uh, we've been acting illegally, unconstitutionally mm -hmm. all along. And so uh, give us the opportunity to, I mean, to do that. Is, is that how we build a country? Is that, is that in the national interest? Mm -hmm. I will say no. No, that, that's no, not no what that. we should do. There are so many law-breaking activities going on. Should we legalize all of that? And after we have done this with this kind of argument, where do we go next? I mean, uh, we, anywhere you see partisan infiltration, mm -hmm. which is not acceptable, we should say that because of that, let us amend the constitution. Then we would we will soon come into chieftaincy, where chiefs are not supposed to engage in politics. And so because we know a few chiefs who probably get involved or make pronouncements, so let's go and amend that portion of the law and allow for chiefs to uh, engage in full partisan politics. Is that is that is that so, a position so we, to so take? We so, so we vote no. And then what next? Because as we've seen, look, we have a very beautiful mm -hmm. local government structure. Very beautiful, mm -hmm. as put together by Professor Hoy and his team. Mm -hmm. But we have not respected it so much to the extent that now we think that it is, it is broken and we must introduce political elements into it. I, if, I, we, I, if we vote no, and so we don't amend 55, 3 and, and all, and we stick with 243 and amend it to allow for the public to vote, what will change? A lot will change. First of all, I will plead with you that let us not um, uh, pass such a damning verdict on mm. our local government system. It's been celebrated all over. Mm. Many jurisdictions have come here to understudy uh, our local government uh, system. It's one of the very, very mm. strong legacies mm. of uh, former President Rawlings, of course, mm. as spearheaded by uh, Professor Kwame Nahoy, who was first taxed to really uh, implement it. And, and so uh, it is not accurate to say that it has not served as well. It has really, really... I, I, I'm saying, it, I'm it, saying, I'm saying yeah, that, yeah. and this morning I was raising mm -hmm. some very critical points. For example, in the area of sanitation, mm -hmm. it is originally the role of the local government ministry until the sanitation ministry was put up. Mm -hmm. Now, Oko Van Der Poel, for example, mm -hmm. while he was uh, MC for Accra, mm -hmm. had said that every household in Accra would have a toilet mm -hmm. in there by the close of 2014. We're mm -hmm. still in 2019, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of households that don't have it. It is somebody's role within the local government structure mm -hmm. to ensure that this is done. It is somebody's role to ensure that every household has a waste management company connected to it, and they collect the rubbish and dispose it of properly or recycle. So you're looking at bits and pieces, 
It is the local government's duty to take business operation permits, property rates, and to ensure that the road in front of my house is okay, the street lights are on, my tap is flowing. It is somebody's job. So we can have a beautiful structure that people can come and learn from. But the question is, does the citizenry benefit from it? Because without delay, we pay our property rate, our business operation permit, whatever it is, our market women pay their tolls. Do they get the benefit for it? That's the question I'm asking. So that's the basis for me saying that we have a beautiful one. Mm -hmm. We seem to have broken it. We are running it, and now we say bring politics into it. That's that's my that's my point. And and you think that going partisan will resolve that issue? Have we resolved all the national challenges confronting us with? Uh, uh, this, you know, two-party system that has now mm. really uh, taken hold mm. in national politics. The solution is not to go partisan. The, the solution, I would say, rather, is deeper decentralization, mm. where people at the center do not still want to hijack the mm. system. I mean, we live in a country where even waste beans contracts, it has to be procured at the center. There's too much concentration at the center, in Accra, we don't really want to let go. <laughs> that, to me, has been the bane of the local government system. So if we are committed to full decentralization, where the center would like to just let go mm -hmm. and, and, and allow for full dissolution to take place mm -hmm. so that our local government systems will be allowed to operate. Okay. And then you have uh, very competent MMDCs mm -hmm. uh, who will emerge uh, not on partisan lines, taking decisions in the interest. Because once you get them elected, they will be more accountable to the people right. and not to political parties. Right. You see, the current system you have, where the president really no, is no, 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 the president is overbearing, makes the MMDCs more accountable to the appointing authority and not the people. That's and I true. think that that is what will improve mm. the system, mm. not going full hawk, partisan, all the way down to unit committees. And if I can have a minute on what is happening within the National House of Chiefs, mm. I think that we need to be forthright about what has transpired. I, I do not see a division. We have 16 regions in Ghana. Mm. The National House of Chiefs issues a statement by its president. Mm. And I have seen the second statement. It is only two chiefs, really, mm. out of the hundreds of chiefs we have. And first started by uh, the chairman of the governor's subcommittee, Oji Ahoho, uh, Oji Ahoho mm. who interestingly is a coincid coincidental that he is an appointee of President Akufuado, who serves on the GMPC board. All of these facts have to be put out. Then you have the, 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 the president's chief as well, who now issues a statement saying that the Eastern Region House of Chiefs uh, does not go with this decision. I think that it is, it is rather undermining mm. of the authority of the presence of the National House of Chiefs. And let's call it as it is. It is it's not a division. I mean, it is not a division. I have seen the second statement signed by the president of the National House of Chiefs, Tobi mm -hmm. Afede, and the vice mm -hmm. president of the National House of Chiefs, where they have outlined all the meetings, the fact that they invited the local government minister, they invited the consultant, Dr. Osai, to brief them. Then they set up their own committee, chaired mm -hmm. by Dr. SKB Asante, mm -hmm. who advised them. And then they crystallized a position, which they put out. I, I think that it is, it is really, really unfortunate that, I mean, you see this kind of undermining mm -hmm. Going on, and you ask the question if the National House of Chiefs, uh, you know, was from another part of the country, would that be happening? You see, these are the matters that mm. that 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 do not help us as 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 a country. Oshin, for the, example, the, the says extreme, that it's unfortunate extreme. that the letterhead of the National House of Chiefs was used because it created an impression that it was all of them speaking, but they hadn't agreed on on what was put out there. I have, I, I, I have no cause to doubt the very detailed response that the president and the vice president mm. of the National House of Chiefs have put out. And in any case, my brother, if there are concerns, I respect the Ochehene very much. I respect the uh, uh, Ojiaho. Um, uh, if, if they had concerns, was this the best way to go about it? Could they not have, have, have convened a meeting? Because, you see, they are our chiefs. They are our elders. They are custodians of our traditional cultures. Is this the best way to go, to go public, mm. even if you have some internal you know, concerns, and, and to seek to undermine the authority mm. of the 
president of the National House of Chiefs, the vice president of the National House of Chiefs. And, 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 and we think that this is, you know, conduct which is very honorable. Okay. I, 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 I doubt. Thank and, you. And so I, I am hoping mm -hmm. that the National House of Chiefs will reconvene and, uh, and, 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 and will, will, will settle these matters. And perhaps it is another example mm. why we should not invite partisanship because this country is becoming too sharply divided. This winner takes all. Yeah. And, and it is, this is a partisanship which is at play, even in the National House of Chiefs. Further strengthening our point, mm. <laughs> really, that to avoid MPP market day, NDC market day, uh, MPP KVIPs, NDC KVIPs at the local level, local level, let us do away with that. The partisanship has become too insipid, okay. too, you know, uh, Thank you. Uh, distractive. Thank, Thank you very and, much. And, and we should not, we should not uh, uh, invite Andrew, it. Andrew, take, take, a bite, take a second bite quickly. He raises, he raises a, a couple of key concerns that, look, going partisanship is not the solution and that there are real issues that we must look at and not to sharply divide each other. What do you say? Do you still stand with the earlier points you raised? Absolutely. Because what I hear my friends in the NDC to be saying is that leave the status quo as it is so we can sponsor people at the back and not be held accountable for the actions of those people that we sponsor. Is that any friends you That's draw? exactly what is happening. That's exactly what they are saying. Because otherwise, like I said, we have an opportunity to review our constitution. Mm -hmm. And it is not to say that necessarily legitimize an illegitimate action. It's a question to the people that look, do we want political parties to participate at the local government level? In any event, opening it up for political party participation mm -hmm. does not deprive independents <laughs> from participating. The, the question of independence, but I mean, there are records from 1992, electoral records. How have independents fared in any competitive election in this country from 1992? In terms of political party participation and independence on parliamentary level, on presidential level, how have they fared? How many independent candidates have been successful in this country? Absolutely. I agree. And so when their general secretary... Mr. Sidin Katia announces to them at their Tamale Congress that they won the district level assembly elections. The NDC won in 2011. What did he mean? Because, yes, independents really, do they participate? Do they? So we can pretend as ostriches all we want. I think that the referendum is necessary, it's useful to give the Ghanaian people an opportunity to make a determination whether indeed they want the status quo to remain <coughs> or that the reality on the ground ought to reflect and to deepen rather the winner takes all sentiments that we say we do not want. Because Sami, you know that Allowing political parties to participate at the local level in itself mm -hmm. will lead to a lot of devolution of power. How so? Because, like I said, this country, if you look at the voting pattern, mm -hmm. split within about 40 45 percent. You recall in 2012, mm -hmm. NDC claimed to have won eight regions and MPP two. Mm -hmm. Right? You remember? So if the, those two regions that the MPP won, mm -hmm. the result would remain the same in a local government election. Mm -hmm. What it then means is that MPP would be participating in the governance of our local government system. In the, 2016, the results changed in 2016. Absolutely, I was coming there. Mm. In 2016, it changed. The MPP won in excess of five or six regions. Mm. Correct? The MPP, NDC won in about four or so. Mm. So if we were voting at the local government level, would that be winner takes all? Because at least they will have representation in four regions where they'll be 
participate. But but by the, contributing by, by, by their this, ideas. By, local, by, local this, by this, so, by, by this arithmetic, we're looking at 264 or so districts. 260. 260 districts. Yes. Now, in, in that quantification of you want region A, B, C, and D, it, it isn't as if the opposing party lost it all in the elections. They amassed some votes. Of course, that's why they have 106 or so members so, of parliament. Which would, which that would, we have 169. Which would mean, So in the same vein, mm, at the local level, mm, those proportions will play out. Okay. So so how does that amount to winner takes all then? It doesn't amount to it. Does it? Eyes? When you have your representatives at the local government level. Mm. Some, for example, says, look, let's deepen our decentralization. Let's take democracy to the doorstep of the people. Let's stop NDC market day, MPP market day. But is that what uh, happens? MPP KVIP. It does happen. Look, you finish, elections are done, <laughs> winner is declared, and there's a scramble for everything. Public toilets. Because that's the it. winner takes all practice that we are practicing. And, and the fear is that if we go... But if partisan, NDC, NDC wins in, say, Ketu... Uh, 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 no, no. Get enough or south. Mm. And MPP wins in second D. What will happen? As opposed to the practice where the president appoints in both jurisdictions. Okay. Let's let's uh, take the conversation further in the matter of the chiefs. I've looked at the local government act. It doesn't give the chiefs a place of pride in it. Is it perhaps time that we involve the chiefs? Because look, if you go to your constituency, Sam's constituency, if you want to do something, you would need the participation of the chiefs. I mean, when the chiefs say don't go, nobody will go. So you could be MP, but you could call it there, but nobody will come. If the chiefs give you their blessings, they will be there. Is it about time we give them, you know, some place of pride in the local government act? Well, it is something that can be considered, you know, uh, my, my understanding is that the 30% appointment that uh, His Excellency the President has in uh, appointing assemblymen is to be done in consultation with the chiefs. Mm. Uh, indeed, some chiefs are actually even appointed to the district mm. assemblies. And so, uh, to the extent that that is a constitutional provision, uh, it should find reflection in the Local Government Act. Mm. But to the issue of the National House of Chiefs and the suggestion by my very good friend that mm. uh, some chiefs seem to be undermining the National House of Chiefs. I think it's an unfortunate comment. Is it? Because you see, the National House of Chiefs, mm. do they, the president, does he wield executive power? Does is, he? Is that they could have gone into a conference and not do a public... Of course, he issued a public statement. Mm. Didn't he? He issued a public statement. And so if some other members are of the view that, look, the position that was articulated by our committee mm. has not been adopted by the entire house for it to become the position of the house of chiefs. Mm. They are not entitled to comment on it and that if they do, that is undermining the president of the House of Chiefs. Could they have done let's, it in a better not, way? Let's not do that. Could they have and done look, it in a better interesting, way? Interesting. Listen to what he said. Mm. That if the president was from another region, why, why do we make comments like that? Reading tribalism into it. Could we have done it in a better way? I don't know. And I'm open for discussion on that as mm. to whether... Uh, some consultation should have taken place before this statement was issued mm -hmm. or that the chiefs who have responded ought not have responded in public. There's no problem. But why do we insinuate without any basis? Sam, I think Sam's problem, and, and Sam, try Sam's to, issue no, that, was the fact that, look, look if, see, if, if the National House of Chief creates a certain impression out there that they are not together, it will further affect it. Look, if politicians have a problem, they expect the chiefs. Look what Otufu Asantehene did, you know, in the matter of Dagbam. After 17 years break, 
they finally are celebrating. If there's a big issue, our Council of State is filled with chiefs and, and all of that. So perhaps a public impression of unity is key. And that's what perhaps Sam is talking about, don't you think? Well, I, 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 I tend to agree with that. And I'm pretty restrained in, in ordinarily making comments on matters that affect our chieftain's institution. I'm only drawing attention to the line of arguments that my good friend was mm. making. And mm. I'm saying that when issues like this come up, we should refrain from making such insinuations when there's absolutely no basis. Was that, was that the inference you drew from? Absolutely. Sam. Why introduce that if the president was from another region, mm. would this be what is happening? What does it mean? Sam, were you being that, tribalistic? What, that because the president is from the Volta region, that's why the Ochihini and the president of the Western Redan House of Chiefs mm -hmm. are making these comments. Okay. How? <clears throat> Sam, were you being tribalistic? I mean, you know that I am not a tribalist and that uh, I, I, I would rather be forthright and will speak as it is. That's, that's, that's how I like to conduct myself in national affairs. I don't like to play hunky punky and, you know, you know, you know, dance around issues. I mean, my good friend knows me very well. I mean, and, and, and that's why last week when I read the budget yeah. and I saw that under critical roads, yes. Volta region was omitted. To, 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 I was to not, yes. I knew that, I knew that um, detractors would say, oh yeah, he's being tribalistic. You know, when they don't have a clear answer but, but it's been to a matter. For you. Yes. Yeah, imagine, imagine we didn't raise it. Will it have been amended? And instead of commending us for raising it, some sort to call us tribalists. So I'm used to that 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 attack that hit it, it i mean they always throw it in i mean I, I i mean those who know me very well my good friends my wife i mean i mean i'm not a tribalist and i don't i, I believe that we are all Ghanaians right. and we should uh, respect everybody you know as such i insist that the way the national house of chiefs which is where we all run to mm -hmm. as you have rightly said when there are differences when you know um we need you know the uh, to, to 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 drink from their pot of wisdom mm -hmm. we need counseling we need guidance we all run to them mm -hmm. they are above you know these petty divisions and i'm saying that for the image of the national house of chiefs i did not expect mm -hmm. that these matters will be playing out i okay. mean what happened to going into conclave and if you have any reservations mm -hmm. especially as we all now know the details that there had been series of consultations mm -hmm. the chiefs were involved the chiefs who are speaking today attended uh, two of the three meetings mm -hmm. that you know came to the final conclusion so i mean and have been in this we've all been quite active mm -hmm. uh, in national affairs for how many decades now um, have you ever seen this really play out where the authority of the president of the national house of chiefs is so much undermined i mean i i'm not happy about what is happening to Togbi Afede. And, and we, need, we need to state it as it is. is, it, is I, it, I, I do not think that we should go into the realms of uh, casting aspersions. Okay. You see, I would have thought that this could have happened and uh, it could have been dealt with better okay. by the chiefs going into conclave with whatever reservations they, 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 they have. Never mind that Togbe Afede's statement is public. After those internal deliberations, you can ask the same president okay. of the National House to of Chiefs issue to issue another statement, if that is the decision of the majority, mm. to, I mean, straighten issues. You know, but to go this way and to now allow, we don't want our National House of Chiefs to also get into, you know, the petty divisions that really is, is, is threatening to divide this nation. Okay. We, we don't, we don't is need it, it. Is it about time? Let me ask you the same question I did uh, for Andrew. Is it about time we, we created a special space for the chiefs in our local government law? Especially knowing that, look, they cannot do active political participation. But we can't also ignore them because of the, the authority they wield on the local front. Mm -hmm. Is it about time we found a place, a good place to put them in there? Hmm. We've worked that part before, haven't we? Um, if you look at the participation of chiefs in national politics, quite a checkered history. Mm -hmm. um, you recall that uh, in the fight for independence, chiefs were uh, quite frontal. Right, Kwabena uh, Boni uh, Yes, the uh, you know, uh, Bafo, Seakoto, mm -hmm. and, and all of that. And then um, 
and the CPP, a decision was taken, which was passed by the National Assembly eventually into law, that uh, chiefs and, you know, uh, tribal associations, ethnic associations should stay away mm. from national politics. And then we, we seem to have come full cycle. In the Second and Third Republics, mm. uh, the Second and Third Republican Constitution had chiefs mm -hmm. playing an active role in the selection of uh, uh, quotas mm -hmm. to, the, to, to the district assemblies. Okay. Uh, then the Fourth Republican Constitution took that away mm -hmm. um, and gave it to the president to appoint the 30%. So it's mm -hmm. been quite a checkered history. Right. And um, uh, I will say that it is really for these matters that we needed to have deepened consultations. Mm -hmm. I think that this December 17 referendum was rushed. And I agree with Professor Kwame Nahoy, the expert on this matter, who says that, <laughs> look, if care is not taken, we can even have a Brexit situation. There are right. so many other issues that have Somebody not been resolved. Somebody says it. You know, yeah, because how do we handle the 30%, for example? Is it still going to be appointed by the president? Mm. Or will we give it to the National House of Chiefs, as used to be the case in the Second and Third Republics? We have not addressed that issue, you know. Um, uh, how how are unit committees going to organize be organizing themselves? Mm -hmm. the, the political parties would have to what select the candidates, organize primaries. Mm -hmm. Who is going to pay for that, mm -hmm. and, and all of that? So there are so many other issues, you know, including funding and all of that that have not been thoroughly discussed, mm -hmm. and consensus has not been built on those matters. Ha, ha, that, and, 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 and that's why I say that look. If we can postpone this Does it point for to, further consultation, to, it will be in the interest to of our what the you are, NCC you are, you are advocating for a no. So what yes, of course. I mean, yes, yeah, of course. Well, well, in I mean, the absence, in the absence of that, well, we well, no. I, 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 think, I think that they are advocating no, no, for I, I, a no. Our point is are clear. Are you saying that point you, is clear. you agree that uh, uh, political parties should participate, but that let's resolve all the outstanding issues that may arise before that question is put, no. or that you want a no? No. We are saying, be, be, we are, be, be forthright for we, once. We have, but, we, have, we, have, we, have, we, have, we have always been forthright. Look, if you, if you, if, you, if, you, if, if you listen to, if you listen to that our national chairman. should be postponed so that what will happen? Further consultations will lead to what? Have we, have we been Resolving all the so-called Brexit see, issues. Have we, see, have we been see satisfied? What is I don't get it. See what is happening with the National House of Chiefs. It's clear that, it's clear that you didn't have, have we, you didn't have, have we been, you, you didn't have, have we been satisfied with the work that the NCC has done in terms of even educating the public on what a yes vote means, what a no vote means, what this whole referendum mm -hmm. is about. And mind you, the Electoral Commission is also supposed to educate the mm -hmm. public. Have we been satisfied with the two state institutions and how they have exposed the... On this, on this particular referendum, I will commend the NCC especially. Um, uh, not because I have a soft spot for them because I was president of the Civic <laughs> Education Club in Presec, but because they really stepped forward mm. uh, very clearly to even uh, address the misinformation. You know, earlier, an attempt was created as though uh, if you want MMDC is elected, go vote yes. Mm. Voting yes will mean that. Confusing Article 553 with Article 243, mm. when the two have no linkage whatsoever. Mm. You know, so the NCC really did well. Uh, because if you look at some of the persons who were engaged in the ride from the number one gentleman, you know, very senior people, uh, but the NCC, I, I thought we're the going NCC to was not was, uh, lawyer was, Clara uh, Cassetti, was, was not intimidated Cassetti in, in some in, some plaudits in, for in stating, yeah, of course, educating I, yeah, the yeah, public. of course. I mean, I was going to there, there have been quite a number of, I mean, uh, uh lawyer Cassetti mm -hmm. certainly must be commended. Something like the you right. know, probably started this whole no campaign, you know, uh, very, very early on in, in one of his. Uh, very profound, you know, takes mm. on, uh, on 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 news for what he right. calls uh, my take. Mm. So it's 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 been a good campaign. Uh, Justice Shrimsai mm. uh, also comes right. to mind. I I say uh, that HQC Prempe doesn't come to mind. HQC Prempe, but he is yeah, advocating yeah, for a yes. Yeah, yeah, who's, who's Franklin Kujo yeah. also comes to mind. Also advocating for a yes. Mm. Kofi Bento so, advocating uh, for so, a no. Uh, you, you know, so it doesn't it, it really yeah, doesn't so, matter as far as I'm concerned. Okay. You see, because I'll, I'll, we are not trying to finish his point. Very, can I conclude? Yeah. So, 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 so the point really is that the NCC ought to be commended in terms of uh, clear education on the matter. How come fifty percent by the Afrobarometer uh, of of Ghanaians don't know what this referendum is about, and yet we must commend the NCCE because the Afrobarometer report says fifty percent mm -hmm. of Ghanaians 
are not aware what is happening. I'm commending the NCC for clarifying issues, for giving the people of this country some, you know, light okay. in uh, the face of all the haziness okay. and all the, you know, confusion that was created earlier, as though the December 17 referendum will be, you know, will open the floodgates for uh, MMDCs to be elected. Okay. That one it's 243, uh, it's right? 243 okay. which just requires two third votes in parliament. Where, where are we parliament, now in that in parliament? parliament is where are we, now? We, we, are, we are just uh, waiting for the vote, for the speaker okay. to put the question, okay. and then uh, we vote on that. But remember that it requires two thirds, and two so thirds. in this case, it's not just simple majority. Okay. So the views and the position of the minority will be critical okay. in, 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 in reaching uh, a decision. But, but is there consensus in parliament on that? To get, to get that changed so that the people can have the power to elect their MMDCs? Our position is that uh, Article 55.3 should stay as it is. Okay. So that's why we are for no. Okay. Uh, if the question is put before the referendum, they won't get our support. But if it's put after the referendum and say the no vote wins, then they will get our support. You understand? Because we are for so you put we are for we are, we are for yes we are for electing MMDCs, okay. but not on partisan, partisan lines. lines. Okay. Yes, we are not against the election okay. of MMDCs. So they are also a, 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 for election of MMDCs, but on partisan lines. Yes. Okay. So, so that's where they split it. So if they go ahead on December 17 and they put the question before December 17, they are not going to get a, a three-line whip has been invoked, okay. and they would not get the support of the minority. What is in the best interest of Ghana? Let's elect MMDCs, but not on partisan lines. And let us deepen the consultations. These are matters that concerns all of us. Okay. You know, we all come from our hometowns, our communities. We want to see our communities develop. Let's slow down, take our time, and deepen the consultations mm. uh, before we proceed. But, but non-partisan let, 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 let's, let's have a bite. The Ejapa, only reason e Ejapa, that the, the question of the NCC and EC, maybe you'll take a bite on that one quickly. Have you been happy? with how they have educated the public out there on this matter? Well, education is ongoing. Even as we discuss it, people get to hear mm -hmm. what it is that the issues are. In any event, the referendum is in a month. Okay. So uh, we can only judge them when uh, we hold a referendum and people don't participate. But okay. as far as I'm concerned, they are doing what they are supposed to do under the constitution. You, but you, you see, you, usually no. for local level elections, the participation is low especially for assemblyman unit committee the participation is low and we need what uh what percentage are we looking at 50 percent 40 percent 40 percent yes yes you see i don't understand why anybody would attribute the comments that essentially the president made mm -hmm. regarding the voting on party lines for the mmdc's as misinformation how his vision mm -hmm is that ultimately the elections of MMDCs will be on party lines. As so if he's communicating with people and tells them that, look, vote for a yes so that my vision of electing MMDCs is actualized. You say he's misinforming. There's no link. What, 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 There's no link. Could the president I'm saying that his vision is ultimately for that process. But could the president, no. as a lawyer, no, don't have, the have... How is that confusion? ...have mentioned it when the president That's is aware the only re you see, two, four, three, you see, five, no, 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 no. Five, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Johnny, mm. please. The president has a certain vision. Okay. Okay? That elect MMDCEs on party lines. Mm. That's his vision. Okay. That's why he's putting the question before the people of Ghana. Okay. And so if he is communicating... But is his, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Allow him. But what would 55-3 do? But, but what, what question is the referendum no, hold on. seeking what, to answer? What would is to make the president's vision of party lines actualized. Okay, so the president in communicating so how, that to the Ghanaian people took side. But <laughs> what, what, what do you expect him to do? He is the one who is championing this entire process. Mm. You had an opportunity to be in power for eight years. The Constitutional Review Commission you instituted, mm. they came out with their findings, you issued a white paper and put it on the shelf. What have you done about it? But of course, that's why we've put the process in motion. Mm. We have, consistent with our manifesto promise, mm. that we're going to ask the Ghanaian people to choose their MMDCs on party lines. 
So let nobody say the president was misinforming Ghanaians. He was articulating his vision that he wanted the Ghanaian people's buying. Okay? So if the NCCE is taking a position that is purely not based on the present vision, mm. but to explain mm. what it is that the provisions are, it cannot, under any circumstances, or amount to the president. Okay, the thank you and very I, much. Uh, what are you talking about? The Honourable Andre yeah, Japa Mesa is the member of parliament for the second D constituency. Sam, he knows that we did not put the white paper on ice. Okay, but what did he, you do? his conversation with happiness in the courts. No, what, what did you do? We government government was taken to court on the processes. Okay. He knows that, right. and and out of no, respect, I, I, out of respect, for I don't. Him, out of respect for the judge. So 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 who, who took the government yeah, to court? So check your facts. No, so, who, that tell so, us no, who so, are alleging who so, so, so you so you. I don't understand why there, people make case? allegations and ask somebody else to prove it. Is there a court case? Uh, really? ah, let him tell us. Sam, he is the one who is telling. Sam, who took the government to court? I'm surprised you don't know no, that. So tell you, us. Don't, you don't know that. Tell us who took government to court. I do not have the case here. But no, 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 no. I'm not going to know what you do. You said no, that, 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 that we did not put that on ice. Uh, for the first committee you know, of parliament, it's the MP for North Town, and they've been my guest, gentlemen. Thank you very much. I can't thank you enough. And.